How much of the impact does an average YouTuber has? Well, it depends. Glenn Freaker, who has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, can cause pain in the ears for Line 6. But on the other hand, his videos might motivate the developers from Line 6 uh, to improve their products, which they actually did. As for me, I don't think that I have this kind of huge uh, impact. Uh, but anyway, I'll try to make uh, videos uh, to help some manufacturers uh, to improve their products as well. And that's why I started all this series about guitar cabinet modeling. So, let's roll! <laughs> Back in 2007, when I told that uh, digital modeling is the future of electric guitar sound, a lot of musicians looked skeptical at me. Nowadays, nobody can tell a uh, tube amplifier from uh, its digital recreation apart. However, all this progress happened without my influence. I'm not some kind of uh, influential uh, famous musician who can work with factories and uh, develop products uh, according on my preferences. And I haven't uh, give uh, any feedback uh, to these manufacturers which kind of laws they can uh, improve. For example, this speaker simulator from two nodes that I had, I always asked why there is no DI uh, output in it. In later versions, they built this DI output uh, that makes uh, kind of a lot of sense. But all this happened without uh, me telling them what to do. And even if I told them, most probably my email would end up in the spam folder and uh, would be ignored. However, uh, with this series where I talk about uh, the guitar cabinet uh, modeling, I want to uh, bring a couple of ideas. In my previous video, I mentioned the speaker simulator torpedo cap from two nodes that I own about uh, seven years now. I always liked the way it sounded, but I hated the way it worked. Just a simple operation like uh, moving the virtual mic a couple of inches away from the virtual cabinet took uh, too many steps. First of all, you have to plug it uh, to your computer with the USB cable, then you have to bring up the editing software. And then uh, you have to make adjustment, uh, to save it, and after that you can use it. And if you want to do all this without additional tools like a laptop or computer, well, have fun with this single button and a couple of uh, knobs. Well, back in the days when I purchased it, this was pretty much on the product on the market. Nowadays, there are a bunch of uh, 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 similar devices from uh, different brands that work pretty much the same and they all have uh, good quality. Well, the technology improved. However, most of them, as well as uh, this device, work uh, good as the impulse response player. And what do I hate about impulse responses? Well, in the real world I can make adjustment uh, with a single cabinet by adding uh, a couple of uh, different mics, marking it in a different way, or uh, simple uh, by moving the, the mic around the cabinet and to find some kind of unique sound. With the impulse responses uh, you pretty stuck with the uh, cabinet impulse uh, recreation, uh, the way somebody did it or the way you did it, but you couldn't make a some adjustments afterwards. Well, in most of the cases I have to admit uh, that a lot of people uh, with uh, home recording experience make pretty uh, much uh, good uh, recordings using the impulse responses uh, that are there on the market and they don't do a lot of uh, adjustments. They simply use uh, something that is there on the market. But for me, who like to tweak things and uh, if I want to find some uh, unique sound, this is kind of uh, not enough. So I wanted to have some kind of device uh, where I can make some adjustments uh, the way I would do with the real cabinet, 
but without uh, too many steps. And I uh, found this kind of device that is pretty unique. The Chameleon Cape CN1 from the AMT. And I had a lot of uh, good experience with the AMT products. Uh, they brought like the smallest uh, tube gu uh, guitar pre-amplifier on the market. And then they made it even smaller and they make uh, their own uh, uh, cabinet uh, impulse response uh, players that are actually in the 9V battery size that you can literally put into some of the storm boxes and use it with the storm boxes as well. Well, I wanted to try this one out. What can I say? First of all, this is definitely an analog circuit. You can adjust something like the turn of the mic, position of the mic, the size of the cabinet and uh, the type of magnet. So I played it uh, with it a little bit. Let's take a listen. <laughs> say that I'm 100% satisfied uh, with the results that I've got. I might use this kind of sound if I use uh, the clean channel of my preamp, however, if I use the overdriven uh, signal, uh, this doesn't work for me. But I can't say that uh, I'm uh, not 100% satisfied uh, with this device. I'm just amazed how somebody created some kind of analog circuit and it uh, works pretty great. Or the analog circuit. 
I might uh, refer as well to my first video of this series uh, where I took a close look at the uh, red box uh, created by Hughes and Ketna. Basically, this is an analog circuit that uh, is supposed to recreate the sound of the guitar cabinet. And I remember how I checked uh, this one out uh, and uh, some people that uh, endorsed uh, Hughes and Ketna uh, told a lot of good things uh, about Redbox that uh, for me was total catastrophe. But the way they used it uh, was uh, that they took the signal from the red box and they mixed it uh, with the signal that they got from the uh, guitar amp uh, through the cabinet and picked up the microphone. And so they blended two signals together. I might uh, try this one out as well. Let's take a listen. The one thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, this uh, is an analog device, meaning that uh, the signal goes uh, straight uh, through without any decay. If you use it with some kind of digital device like this one, this has a couple of milliseconds of uh, decay, meaning that uh, you need uh, a couple of milliseconds uh, so that signal is being processed digitally. And what uh, you get at the end is... Uh, Maybe the phase issues, uh, that meaning that some of the phases of two signals might cancel each other. So I recorded uh, it in two separate tracks and then I moved uh, one of the tracks to another uh, to uh, make uh, the phase uh, fit uh, perfectly fit each other. And I've got pretty good results. So. If I try it with some of the impulse responses where I can, uh, cannot make any adjustments at all, well, I might as well blend uh, this signal from this device, from this uh, chameleon with uh, some of the impulse responses. Well, actually, there is a lot of great field uh, to experiment. However, this is something that I want to have uh, with some kind of uh, equipment that sounds good, no matter if it's analog or digital. But maybe making it digital is much easier. So, you can adjust here the position and turn of the mic, which you can make uh, with uh, a real microphone and a real guitar cabinet. You can adjust the size of the cabinet and uh, the type of magnet. I don't know uh, what uh, hell this is all about, but you can adjust it with a simple turn of a knob. And that's uh, what I'm trying to uh, achieve. So, the whole point of uh, these videos was appeal to some manufacturers. First of all, of course, this, uh, the AMT. Guys, you made some impossible stuff uh, like sneaker size tube pre-amplifier. That sounds great. Maybe you might take a closer look at uh, this device. Who knows? Or maybe some other manufacturer if you are watching uh, this video. Well, 
why won't you try to make some kind of device that is operated uh, this easy but sounds as good as uh, the digitally recreated uh, uh, guitar cabinets uh, with uh, some of the best impulse responses? Well, I guess this is uh, all for today. But there is one video where I actually uh, found this kind of device. But this is a topic for my new video.